Hello and welcome to the Tool Lending Library at the Smart Building Center, an energy efficiency innovation space for commercial and institutional buildings. Our focus is showcasing where smart meets efficient. And we offer state-of-the-art training and meeting spaces, educational resources such as this training video, and our Tool Lending Library offers a wide spectrum of monitoring and diagnostic tools available for free. So to create an account and check out our tools, go ahead and visit our website at www.smartbuildingcenter.org. So in this video, we'll verify the effectiveness of the ventilation system by measuring CO2 levels in a space over time. And we'll do that using this Telair 7001 CO2 monitor and this Hobo U12 data logger. So this is a really versatile data logger. It can measure temperature, humidity, and light using internal sensors. And then it also has this optional port for an external sensor. So that's what we'll be using to connect to the Telair monitor. So first of all, let's go ahead and configure this logger by plugging it into the mini USB cable that's attached to the PC here. And I've got my Hoboware uh, software pulled up here. And so you can see down here in the lower right hand corner of the screen, I have one device connected. That's our Hobo U12 data logger that we just plugged in. Up in the upper left hand corner of the screen, there's this icon for launch device. This is the icon with the arrow pointing to the right. I'll click launch and I'll go ahead and click yes to continue with the launch setup. Now I want to make sure the file has a name that will make sense. So conference room is fine. We've got enough battery level for the couple weeks that we're planning on logging. And then we want to configure the sensor. Now we're not using, in this case, any of the internal sensors. We'll be using the external sensor port number four. And so we want to choose carbon dioxide and then the cable dash CO2. So that's the cable adapter that comes with the Telair carbon dioxide monitor and that'll plug into the logger port. Give it a label that will make sense on the graph, CO2. And then you have lots of many options here for logging interval. We can leave this at five minutes, that's fine. The duration shows how much space the logger has on it at that interval. So got plenty of time. And then you also have options for when to start logging. Uh, you can start it on a specific date, date or time, for example. I'm just going to click log now because we're going right away to into the conference room to start logging. And then I can hit start. OK, so now that I have that logger configured properly, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect from the USB. And we'll go into our space that we'll measure. And we'll set these up and leave them going so we can collect some data. OK, so here I am in the conference room while, where we will be monitoring the CO2. And so I've got my CO2 monitor here, this Telair. And then I also have the U, uh, Hobo U12 data logger that I've configured to work with the Telair 7001 uh, CO2 monitor. So I'm just going to very simply plug this in. This uh, data logger has a little port on the side. And it's got a real simple connection here. Then I've got a Cat5 style connector on the back of this Telair. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in. And voila, we're ready to go. So I'm going to leave these sitting here for at least two weeks so that we can get a sense of what's happening with the CO2 levels over occupied periods, unoccupied periods, week, weekdays, and weekends. OK, so I've got my logger here from the conference room. We've been logging for a couple of weeks, capturing that CO2 data. So we'll go ahead and plug this back into the mini USB cable connected to my PC. And I've got Hoboware software pulled up here. So you can see you have your device connected. That's our Hobo U12 logger. 
And so I can go up into the upper left-hand corner of the screen. I'm going to click this uh, Read Out Device button. This is the little icon with the arrow pointing to the left. Okay, and then I want to save this file. So here we have a nice graph of our CO2 levels. And it's useful to get a picture, rather than taking spot measurements of CO2, it's useful to get a picture over time so you can kind of see what the levels are doing. And this is because it's important to consider the principle of equilibrium. And that is that when people enter a space at the beginning of the workday, for example, the CO2 level in the space would be low. And then as um, the workday continues and people enter the room, that level will rise and then eventually will level off. So you can see where the where the peaks are happening. That is where we've reached equilibrium, where the amount of CO2 produced by the occupants is in balance with the space ventilation. So those are the areas we want to look at. Um, and another important consideration is the outdoor CO2 level, which is your, your baseline. Generally, we can consider an outside uh, CO2 level around 400 parts per million. And so we'll, that's what we'll assume here in the Seattle area. It's slightly higher generally than 400, but we'll just call it 400. And the guideline by, provided by ASHRAE is that you don't want a, a level of CO2 uh, over 700 parts per million over the outdoor levels. So if we have 400 as our base outdoor level, then we don't want CO2 levels in, inside the space above 1100. So looking at these peaks here, we can see we kind of range, we've got maybe about 950, going down to somewhere in the 600s for some of these, back up to about 950. We do have a couple of spikes higher than 1100 here, um, but that's not gen the general profile, so I wouldn't be too worried about that. If you're seeing that often, then that might be an indication that you have inadequate ventilation. Um, generally, it looks like our equilibrium is re reached at about anywhere between 500 to 950. So we can say that we have adequate ventilation in, in the space. We can also look at if you are seeing very low CO2 levels, generally that might be an indication that you are overventilating and potentially wasting energy. Now it's also a good idea to take measurements in each zone of a specific air handler to get a clear picture and to see if there are any anomalies um, that can help you diagnose issues with certain zones, for example. So this is the first step in doing an indoor air quality investigation, but this, is, this can give you an idea of whether you're, you're overventilating or underventilating or whether you're in a good place. Okay, so now we're done uh, downloading and analyzing that data, we can disconnect from the computer and you can see how simple it is to use a data logger to measure CO2 and therefore, therefore determine whether your ventilation is working effectively. Be sure to check out the other training videos on, in this series and, and visit our website at www.smartbuildingcenter.org.